all powerful, almighty name of Jesus. We come before you humbly this morning, God, knowing that it's only by your grace and your mercy that you allowed us to see this great day that you have made. You allowed us to accept this great salvation that you have offered. You have given us power beyond measure through the gifting and infilling of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, for being God and God alone. We thank you for water baptism in your name, the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for calling us sons, for bringing us into your body, for saving us, O oh God, and raising us. We thank you right now for calling us out of darkness, O oh God, into your marvelous light. We thank you for calling us by your name, recognizing us as the family of God. We give you praise this morning in our hearts, in our minds, with our lips, with our tongues. We give you all of the honor and all of the glory because it is due your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you again for waking us up this morning. We thank you for clothing us in our right mind, giving us a mind to want to come out into the house of praise, the house of prayer, the house of worship, to assemble together in your name for your glory and your honor. We thank you right now even for whatever we've gone through up to this point in our lives because you have brought us here, Father, and as the songwriter said, you didn't bring us here to leave us. You didn't bring us here to drop us off. You didn't bring us here to abandon us, oh God. But we know that you will carry us on from this earth to that glorious home that you went away to prepare for us. Now as we pray this morning, we've asked you for many things over the years, over the months, over the weeks, even over the past couple of days, but we have to ask you again because we know that all good and perfect gifts come from you, and so we ask you right now to heal our bodies, oh God. We ask you to heal our families, heal our relationships. We're asking you right now to heal our minds, my God. Increase our understanding of you and of your word, Lord Jesus. Help us, oh God, increase our faith right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to walk even more by faith and not by what we see and not by what we hear and not by only what we've been told. But help us, oh God, to reach unto you, looking forth unto you, the author and finisher of our faith. Strengthen us in our bodies right now. Strengthen us in our walk with you, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us in our relationships with those that are not in our family, oh God. Help us to be the light and soul that you have called us to be. Help us to spread this unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us right now to compel men to come to be saved, oh God. As Peter was preaching and he compelled those to be saved and your power was working in their midst. We ask for your power to work in our midst this morning. We ask for your anointing to be felt in our presence this morning. We ask you to save souls. We ask you to heal minds. We ask you right now, God, to reach out to those that are feeling sick in their bodies. Touch, heal, and deliver in the name of Jesus. Let your healing virtue flow right now, Father. We give you all of the praise this morning. We ask a special blessing even on the Foy family in the name of Jesus. Continue to cover, continue to bless Sister Ford and Evangelist Kelly, oh God, Sister Shannon and Sister Tony, continue even to bless our pastor, oh God, as he continues the work that has been started here over 80 years ago. My God, your word says, upon this rock, you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So we come against everything that is not like you right now in the name of Jesus. We proclaim the victory that you have already given us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This time we're going to turn you over to the hands of our praise and worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue to celebrate the life of Bishop Boyd, we're just going to be giving this tribute to him today. Join in with us some of his favorite, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> 
years, he's been good. I said, down through the years, he's been good. Yeah, I'm my shotgun.
but he has done great things. But not just for me, but for you. For C-Tech, he has done great things.
Facebook the other day. And a friend of mine, he had his motorcycle out on Facebook, right? Here we are in November in Minnesota, and we are outside. I don't see one winter jacket. I don't see one parka, no bomber jackets out here. So the Facebook post said, I just couldn't put my hurt away. And he was talking about his motorcycle because the weather was so nice outside. So I believe that we can give God just a couple more minutes of praise. We're going to let the musicians play this morning. And you can give God the praise in whatever manner you see fit. But let's give God all the praise for over 60, over 70, even close yesterday to 80 degrees in Minnesota in the month of November because he's done so many great things for us. Hallelujah. Come on, musicians. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I was glad when 
when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm so excited today that the Lord has blessed us with just another day to be able to celebrate here outside in the church parking lot. We started these celebrations this summer, beginning with the 80th birthday of our very own Pastor Emeritus, Bishop Foy. And as he has made his transition from home to glory, I thought that it was only appropriate for the final parking lot service that we have outside in 2020 would be here to honor our very own Bishop Foy. If you love him, honk your horns, clap your hands, and give God some praise. And we honor the night and celebrate Bishop Foy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. Amen. For his life as we celebrate him. And thank God for everything that he has done for all of the years ministering, pastoring, mentoring here at Christ Temple for 20 years as pastor, but many more years serving the Lord in the house of God, finding whatever his hands could do, he would do. And so we thank God for him. We thank God for you being here as well. And I know that even though your hearts may be sad, we can take comfort in knowing where Bishop Foy is on today. Amen. That he has gone on to be with the Lord. And so again, we appreciate you being here uh, in our church parking lot, not only today, but all summer long. And even before that, as we uh, started having our services online beginning in the month of March until we were out here in the parking lot, but it's because of your love, your support, amen, supporting our services online as well as on Sundays, amen, by your giving and everything else you could do. I want to thank as well all of our volunteers and help that put together in a moment's notice and set up everything with our sound equipment, our cameras, our mics, our praise team, our musicians. Put your hands together and honk your horns for them. Amen. We're doing this one more time. Amen. And as we prepare to give on today, we're going to ask our praise team to give us a selection. As we give on this morning, we're going to ask that you would give electronically using our Givelify apps as well as our cash apps and PayPal. That information is available to you. We thank those of you that are joining us on our social media platforms, Facebook Live and YouTube. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. We're going to ask our praise team to sing another one of Bishop Foy's songs that he loved to sing as we give unto the Lord today.
have made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be made glad. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you as well for everything that Bishop Foy poured into each and every one of our lives. We celebrate his life on today and we honor him for everything that he has done. We thank you, Lord God, for Sister Foy and the entire family on today and ask that you would continue to bless them, Lord God, during this time of need. Father, we want to again praise you for every gift that you have blessed to be given even on today for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And even in the midst of this pandemic, we pray that you will continue to bless all of your people. Meet every need right now in Jesus' name. Bless every resource. Provide, Lord, for we know that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are God, our provider. And we thank you and we ask that you will bless those Lord God, that are not feeling well today, those who are sick, those, Lord God, that even may have come down with COVID, we ask that you would cover them right now in the name of Jesus. Deliver them, protect them, bless them right now to be healed and that they might be delivered. We give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for all of you on today. What a beautiful, beautiful day the Lord has given us. Amen. One more time. That's why, amen, when the scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That we're making this parking lot the house of the Lord on this afternoon. And for those of you... Again, we want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to our live stream on yesterday for the celebration of the life of Bishop Charles J. Foy. And for any of you that would like to have a program uh, that was given out yesterday during the service as you exit out of the parking lot, you can pick up a copy of the program. We'll give a copy, one copy to each car as you are exiting out, if there are others that would like to have extra copies, we'll make arrangements at a later time to make that possible. But we do have enough programs for those of you that are here on today to be able to take one per car as you exit out of the parking lot. Again, we want to thank the Lord for blessing us to be here. And as I stated earlier, I thought that it was appropriate since we started having these parking lot services to celebrate Bishop Foy's 80th birthday that this particular Sunday would be our final Sunday and what a beautiful day the Lord has given us and so we want to take advantage of this opportunity and bring your attention today for our message to the book of St. Mark, chapter number 8. Just two verses I will read in your hearing. St. Mark, chapter number 8, verses 36 and 37. Amen. And it reads, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. Father, we thank you again for this day that you have given us. We ask that you would bless this word as it goes forth, that it might fall on good ground on today. Father, send your word and let it accomplish that which you please. Meet every need that your people have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The subject that I would like to use on today is in the words of this theme based upon verse number 36 and that is I can't lose my soul I can't lose my soul and today as I stated we're having one more service to honor such a great man of God for his labor of love to the body of Christ to our church, 
serving as a pastor, a mentor, he was a husband, a father, and so much more. Bishop Foy wanted souls to be saved more than anything else. That's what his ministry was all about. I watched him how he would labor on the altar with individuals as they were seeking the Lord for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And he truly believed that there was nothing more important than one's soul. Matter of fact, you might say that every time he got up to sing the song, I can't lose my soul, that he sang it with such a passion. That passion that he had was not only coming from the standpoint of his desire to see other individuals saved, but he also wanted himself to be saved as well. That's why he didn't live a life as a hypocrite, but he was a man of integrity who lived what he preached about. So what he preached about on Sunday mornings, he took home and he lived it everywhere he went. And that's why I so appreciate the words of Evangelist Kelly as she honored dad on yesterday and spoke about how consistent he was in doing the things that he did. In other words, the same person that you saw preaching on Sunday was the same individual who was living those words on Monday through Saturday. And he wanted more than anything else to introduce people to Jesus Christ. And so as we look at this particular text here in Mark chapter number 8, we see in the beginning that uh, Jesus went out and his disciples, the scripture says, into the towns of Caesarea, Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, whom do men say that I am? And he asked this question because there was some confusion regarding who he was. There were some who just considered him to be a prophet. There were others who said that you are Elijah. Uh, there was some confusion, as I said. And Jesus wanted to uh, get an understanding from those who were around uh, who are people saying I am and I believe that is a question that is also still being asked today as we see individuals really not knowing who Jesus is or maybe they know about Jesus but they don't truly know the saving power that he has and so the Lord asked the question to begin to allow them to ponder and to try to get them to understand who he really was because there were many opinions of him. And some of the opinions that people had of Christ, they weren't low. Uh, they thought of him as being a good person. They thought of him as being one who was in touch with God. Uh, but what we need to understand, even as Bishop Foy labored in his ministry, was not so that we might just know about Jesus, but that we might know him intently as well as we might know him in the power of his resurrection. And so after the Lord asked them, well, who are people saying I am? He wanted to bring it to a more personal level because that's where it really counts. It doesn't matter how your grandmother or your mother or your father may know Jesus. The real question is, do you know who he is? And so Jesus went on to ask them and he said, well, whom do you say I am? That's where Peter then answered and said unto him, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now when he was asking these questions, I find it interesting that he was within six months of the time 
where he was going to go to the cross. So as Peter was explaining to him by revelatory knowledge who Jesus was, we see that as he answered and he let him know, yes, I know who you are, that today we have to ask ourselves that same question. When we see ourselves living in the midst of a pandemic and see some of the uh, issues that are facing this world on today, that it comes to a point in our lives where we have to know who Jesus truly is and not just know about him, but know him for everything that he stands for. The reason why I say that is there is no way that you're going to be able to make it amen this year and in the coming years without having a personal relationship with the Lord for yourself. There's no way that you're going to be able to make it except you having been born of the water and of the spirit. And that's what I want you to understand that even though Bishop Foy is no longer here, that there may have been some individuals that knew Jesus through Bishop Foy, but they didn't know him beyond Bishop Foy himself. And so after now he has made his transition from home to glory, there might be some individuals, if you are not on the solid foundation yourself, that when he's no longer here, you might not find yourselves here. But I want you to know the gospel of Jesus Christ goes beyond any one person, pastor, man, or woman, that our Lord is, he is Lord all by himself. And when you have a relationship with him, when certain things come up and when issues come about, when you are on the solid foundation, it doesn't matter how strong the wind may blow or how strong the storm is. When you are on a solid foundation, you will find beyond the shadow of a doubt that nothing is more important than your soul. So we see as Peter let him know, I know who you are, uh, but then after that happened, Jesus then began to tell him, after he said, you truly are the Christ, the Lord thought he would drop a little bit more knowledge on them, if you will. Began to teach them, telling them that I'm going to have to suffer many things. Going to be rejected of elders. Going to be rejected of chief priests and scribes. Not only that, but I'm going to die. But three days later, I'm going to rise again. And after he shared with them this information, we see that Peter, after he just had a revelatory experience and declared who Jesus was, here he was after the Lord telling him what he had would have to suffer, what he would have to do in going to the cross, Peter then began to rebuke him openly. Notice in verse number 32, it says, and he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Can you imagine, here you are, having a revelatory experience with the Lord, and then the very next minute, saying something that is totally against the word of God. And so he, can you imagine, having enough nerve to rebuke the Lord after he says, look, there's going to be some things I'm going to do where I'm going to have to suffer. There are going to be some things, there are going to be people that are going to reject me. And I just want you to know that are here today uh, for those of you that might need to be encouraged when there are individuals who reject you because of the things that God has called you to do. Not only that, but if our Lord had to suffer some things, I want you to know that we can also expect to suffer some things as well. But the Bible says that if 
we suffer with him, that we shall also reign with him. In other words, no pain, no gain. That there are some things in this life that God understands and knows that we have to go through. They may be undesirable, but it's all in his plan. Even as Bishop Foy, during this past year, it seemed like for the longest time, even he said that there weren't many physical challenges that he had. But during this last year, there was challenge upon challenge. And what I loved about what someone shared on yesterday is that not only did Bishop Foy exemplify and show us how we must live, but when, amen, he was going through the physical challenges that he had, he also showed us how one could die in the Lord. And when he was living out his last days, he didn't murmur and complain, but he continued to praise the name of our God. Even in the midst of physical challenges and in the midst of obstacles, he still pressed his way when he had the strength in his body to come out to the church parking lot and to lift up the name of God. Why is that? Because he didn't just know about Jesus. He knew who Jesus truly was. That was the revelatory experience that he had. And so as Peter is going in to this rebuking of our Lord Jesus Christ, we see then that Jesus tells him, I, what you get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be, but the things that be of men. He wanted to set the record straight. He wanted to let Peter know the things that you're saying, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and that's what we who are the people of God have to do with the things that come into our life and words that are spoken to us that are not anything like God that we have to take amen the word of God to these things that will try to come into our lives and bring doubt and to bring deceit and try to bring all kinds of mess and rebuke the enemy right where he is. Don't waste any time, any time the enemy tries to try to bring anything that's anti-God or against God's word into your life. You let him know, get out of my house, get out of my home, get out of my family. And sometimes you have to make it a little personal and say, get out of my mind. Wherever the enemy is, we're not going to allow him to come into our camp, amen, and set up camp right in the midst of us. But Jesus said, rebuke you, I rebuke you, Satan, get behind me. When he went on to say that, he went on to share a little more. He started to tell him, whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, for the gospel's sake, shall save it. In other words, he told him, for what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. In other words, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And this was the message that Bishop Boy lived his entire life. You know, there's something about a song that you can sing, but there's something different about it when you sing it because of the passion and how uh, the relationship that you have with the song. And so when Bishop would get up and sing the song, I can't lose my soul, he wasn't just singing it without having an experience with it, but he wanted to let somebody know that nothing is more important than your soul. Here we see in the year 2020 that many things have come up. There have been people making decision after decision and trading in certain things and putting their soul on the back burner. But I want you to know no matter what happens this year, don't you allow anything to put you in a position 
where you lose your soul. You might lose money, you might lose homes, you might lose jobs, but don't you dare lose your soul. You might lose some friends, you might even lose some family, and some of that family might be church family because they can't understand how you can hold on to God in the midst of while everything is going wrong in your life. But even Jesus said, look, there are going to be some things that I have to suffer. There are going to be some things that I'm going to go through. But I want you to know that I'm going through it for your benefit. I got to go to Calvary because the only way that you are going to be able to get your soul saved is I've got to go to the cross. So he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. I declare in the name of Jesus that nothing is more important than your soul. You ought to put away all of that other mess that's in your life that is trying to hold you back and don't allow it to hold you down any longer. If you've gone away from church, now's the time to come back because what does it profit you to gain all of Roseville, all of Minneapolis, all of St. Paul, all of the United States and lose your soul. Today is the day when you hear his voice, not to harden your hearts. I've got to, I've got to be saved. I've got to hold on. I've got to live right. I've got to be holy. I've got to be righteous. I've got to keep moving. I can't allow anything to keep me from being saved. Not my, my mother don't go. I've got to go. If my father doesn't go, I've got to go. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And that's what Bishop's ministry was all about. And now that he's gone, guess what? We're still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ because it works. Listen, Jesus works. The baptism in Jesus' name, it works. The Holy Ghost, it works. If you believe it, honk your horns, clap your hands, and God give God praise because it works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you might be in, hold on to your soul. Don't allow the devil to trick you to walk away from church, to walk away from anything without you understanding the importance of your soul because nothing is more important than your soul. It's the song he would sing, I can lose money. I can lose friends. I can lose all of these things. But you can't lose your soul. Until the day he went on to be with the Lord, he didn't allow the sickness that he, the illness and the disease that he was going through to allow that to change his relationship with Jesus Christ. No, if nothing else it only solidified the relationship that he had even more. Because how can you all of your life give all you have to God? And then when it comes down to the end, you say, well, God, now it's time for me to go back. No, you lived all of your life for the Lord. Now is not the time for you to turn around. God has been too good to you. He's been too great to you. And that's why even during this time, we have to hold on to the Lord. I can't lose my soul. No matter what happens, I can't lose my soul. I can't lose it. I can't lose it. I can't lose it. Your friends might go back. But the question today is for you. Jesus first asked the questions to the people that were around. But when it comes right down to it, he asked Peter, now who do you say that I am? Because that's what really matters. 
want you today to hold on to God. Hold on to his unchanging hand. Don't allow, allow anybody or anything to turn you around. Because you've come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you that the road would be easy. Jesus said there's going to be some things that I'm going to suffer. But somebody said, I don't believe he brought me this far just to leave me. Do I have any witnesses in here? The Lord didn't bring you this far in 2020 to leave you. Huh? No. But now I've come too far. social media platforms we encourage you today to give your life to the Lord As Elder Green read earlier in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38 that if you repent and are baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins Lord will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that you might become a son of God and so even though you might be at home or wherever you're listening to us, you can let us know that you want to be baptized, that you want to give your life to the Lord. You can go to our website right at the top and drop in your name and we'll make arrangements to bring you here and to baptize you in Jesus' name. You might even be here in the parking lot on today. You don't have to wait for another week. We'll baptize you today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I can't lose my soul. This is so important. This is so critical. That this is the biggest decision you'll ever make in your life. Because nothing is more important than your soul. And that's why Jesus Christ went to the cross and died. So that you might be born again. And so if you're here today, you can come up at the end of the service. We'll baptize you. If you are online, just let us know and we'll make arrangements to baptize you. Why? Because it's that important to us. Because Jesus loved you so much and we love you too. And we want to make sure that your soul is right with God. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for this day that you have given us. We thank you even as we honor Bishop Foy on today. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his influence. We ask, Lord God, that the message that he preached, the messages that he sung about, even as he sang time to time, I can't lose my soul, that you would allow that to burn into our spirits. That no matter what we're going through right now or what we will go through in this year, that we'll understand the importance that nothing is more important than our soul. And Father, now as we depart from this service on today, we ask that you would bless our country. Even as a new president has been elected, we ask that you would bless this country to become united and come together. We pray that there will be a smooth transition from the current administration to the incoming administration and that you will bless both men with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. 
Father, as you have been inst instructed us to pray for our government leaders, we ask right now that you would pray. Bless them. Bless our church. Bless our families. Bless us as we even lead from this place on today. As we give your name the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. We love you, Christ Temple, in Jesus' name.